Good morning. Uh, um, we'll do a presentation about solving large scale problem using Jump. Uh, uh, my name is Trainer Silva. I'm from Lamps Laboratory. And this presentation is a little bit different from the other ones. Michael said yesterday something about the back end part, the front end part. We have the back end when you're talking all about these solvers. And in the front end, we're talking about these frameworks. In this presentation, I will focus more on the user part, how you use the jump to solve those kind of problems. And my, my agenda for the presentation is just talk a little bit of our laboratory, uh, some research projects, some commercial research project that we had. Uh, I do a lot of benchmarks. You see many benchmarks from different languages. Uh, I want to show this from the community. Uh, I will talk a little bit about SDP use. The SDP has some different ways to use Jump and to use solvers. I want to talk about a little bit of this. And I will finish up with some thoughts uh, of how we are using Jump and Julia on uh, our laboratory. So uh, LUMPS is a laboratory at Hill. Uh, we have now more than 20 students uh, between PhD and master students uh, and research also. We have uh, many professors there that the laboratory. Uh, they come from different backgrounds, optimization, statistics, and temporal series. Uh, most of the problems that we had is on energy, but we also have some problems in finance and oil and gas production. Uh, why we started using Jump? Uh, we I had some some previous work in Julia, but we had to have a big and a good framework, optimization framework in the language in order to, to us guys to have to use. Because we are optimization guys, so we cannot go to a, a language that doesn't have this kind of framework or doesn't have other optimization guys that use it. So Jump was the major reason that we changed to Julian. It's a very good language, don't get me wrong on that. It's a, there is nice performance, but if you don't have Jump, we couldn't migrate to Julian. Jump's very versatile and easy to use, under, even for an undergrad. If you have a background on optimization, this is very used, easy to use. Uh, we have some issues with using optimization and some other language, for example, MATLAB. It's very bad on optimization. So if you, are, if you have a commercial product that uses MATLAB, many times you have to use another language, like Moselle, uh, to optimize the, the model. And this uh, it was very bad for the final product. And we also get, got stuck with uh, some kind of solver. If you use, for example, in your case, Express, uh, you, everyone uses Express in the laboratory. You cannot change that solver. Because you are so accustomed to using it, and you, you know all the details how to use it, if you have to change to Cplex or Gurobi, it will be a huge change. You can, cannot that, do that easily. So that was a big thing for us. We can change the, the solver easily, and we can test different solvers and see which solver you should use for each problem. OK? So uh, just some, some of the projects. Th those are commercial ones projects. We know that Julian Jump has a very good, successful history with academic research. But we are also have some very successful projects using Julian Jump. Uh, some big projects. The common thing about all those projects is that all they are using Julia and Jump, and all they, all this problem has a huge database. So, for example, in the first one, you have churn and fraud detection for credit card companies. There's a huge database. Imagine the number of transactions that this this company have on one day, for example. The second one is an energy problem. You have a, a High frequency series on that problem. It's some challenge to do to work with that. Some database can even work with this kind of this large number of that data. The third one here is the Android framework, and we also dealing with huge data from uh, Brazilian hydro and thermoelectric generation. The last one it's optimization for oil and gas production with inserted. There are also a challenge there. There are a lot of binary variables. Some of the models have something more than 1 billion binary var variables. It's difficult to solve it. I'm not getting in, in details of this model. If you want to know more about it, you can ask me later. 
Okay, so just a little bit on my history with Julian Jump. Uh, I, it was about uh, 2014. Uh, we discovered uh, Julian Jump. Uh, about that time, we are trying to use it in many cases we can. But I was finished my PhD, and my advisor insists me to port everything to Julian. But I, I was two years developing C++, so I, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I didn't have the courage to do that. Uh, so uh, as soon as I start my uh, finish my PhD, I start my postdoc on, at Book here, and now I have time to port everything to from C++ to Julia and jump. So the first thing that I do in many languages that, that I try to benchmark it with the other ones, and this was the first first ben benchmark that I did. I think this is Julia 0.5, and you can saw here the uh, pre-compilation time if you have something. That's small, some small instance. You have a huge difference between the Julia and C++, but it's a smaller time. But if you scale up, you can go, you can get a, a very close time between Julia and C++. And one special thing about this is that uh, I developed this C++ for uh, something like two years, and the Julia code was done in less than a month. Okay. So uh, I was convinced about the huge success in academic part of the Julia and Jump use it. So uh, now I'm trying to convince everyone else on the lumps and, other, and also the teacher to use it, to use more frequently also. I had a research problem that it's a humanitarian logistic problem with endogenous uncertainty. You have a master problem with MIP and also some nonlinear constraints. Uh, this is a, it's a little bit like similar to Bender, the composition. We had cuts to add. Uh, you, I, I had uh, previous research did this code on Mosaic, Moselle using Cipla, using Express. I do do two versions of this code. First one in C the second one in Julia, using C there is, it's a little bit difficult to compare those methods when you have different gaps or small gaps, but if you are satisfied with 1% gap, you can see that Julia has a huge advantage, advantage on this case. Uh, I'm not sure why the, there is this huge difference between C++ and Julia, but maybe it's because I'm using concerts on, on C++ and in Julia we are using the C uh, library. We know that concept is a little bit slower than, than the other. But this is initial code. I didn't turn in this, those code, not the C++, neither the Julia code. Okay, just an initial code with no, no enhancing performance. The other thing that I talk about, the advance of ju jump in Julia can change the solver whatever you want. So for this problem, I use three different solvers just to show, to see which is the best for, for my problem. I test Cplex with Robin Express, and for this case, Cplex was the best one with uh, much lower uh, times than the other ones. Okay. Another problem that I have, it's a hydro dispatch problem with uh, inter variable. We use some mixed inter round cuts on th this problem. That's not a very good implementation of that. That's just, again, some initial implementation. We did some cutting plane, branching bounding, branching cuts algorithm with that. The first implementation was done in MATLAB, and the second one in Julia. Uh, the, the big difference here, if you're using some small instance, no problem, the, the, the time is closer. But you can see if you have a, a more big instance, MATLAB can be 10 times as lower than Julia code. Okay. Initial, version, initial code for both of these. Uh, another application that I had, it's a machine learning code. We use support vector machine. If you don't know anything about it, no problem. But imagine uh, a matrix with the columns are the dimension of the problem, the features of the problem, the lines are the points of the problem. And we are increasing those dimension and points to see how Jump and Julia will behave with using Cplex and also in C++. So you can see that for the small problem, no problem at all. If have more big problem, you have some difference there, but not that big one, okay? 
So uh, and now I will talk about more about SDP. I don't know if you're familiar with SDP, but I don't have time to get in detail about the methodology. Uh, I just want to to show how SDP is different from the, that other one applications that uh, was being successfully used in Jump. So uh, the SDP is a methodology to to solve multi-stage stochastic problem. Uh, I think it was. The, in many cases, the best one to use. Uh, SDP, there is a trick in SDP that you can see on this Bellman equation, that SDP approximates the future cost function, this, this guy here, with a piecewise linear approximation. So we'll do a forward step and a backward step, adding cuts to this problem. And the special thing about SDP, the Stochastic Dynamic Group Program, is the he used the dual variable to construct those cuts, okay? But the important thing here to see is that SDP is a different application because you are interacting a lot with jump and with the solver. You are adding a lot of cuts in different, in different problems. You have a lot of problems and problems. So you are always changing the adding constraints to the, the model and always changing the right-hand side of the model. So just to know how to use SDP, when you converge SDP, with what you end up with is a future cost function at each stage that you can use to, to question about the, the decision. So for example, if you have a portfolio location model and you have the location that you want to go with it, uh, you can ask for the, this function, what will be the future return if I do this allocation? Okay, so at each stage you have some future cost, future cost function that can, you can use on the optimiz optimization. So uh, the SDP was a special case, and uh, uh, in the beginning I was having some issues using Jump. The first model that I developed in C++ would, uh, would get about one, 100 gigabytes of RAM. If I port to direct to Julia, I will double that value. So I couldn't use it in a machine with, with that, low, that amount of gigabytes. So it was a computation bottleneck to use directly jump. And also, uh, if I couldn't remove the constraint, I couldn't lower this use of, of, giga, of memory and, and optimize the memory consumption. Uh, there was also later uh, uh, performance decrease in compared with low level API. I will talk about this more later. Okay. So uh, how did I solve the, those problem? I was very happy with Jump. I was using many problems. So uh, uh, I would try as most, most, most as possible to use Jump in, in all, all the applications. So I did all the construction of the model. That's much more easy to read when you and change the model when you're doing Jump. And as soon as I uh, finish the construction of the model, I start to use low-level API. So all the constraints and all the right-hand side are doing on low-level API. The downside of this is that I have to choose a solver. Uh, so I did a benchmark using all jump and change the solver. And this is the best solver for me is Cplex on this case. OK, uh, I don't have the, the, the older version of this code, but I have a new version of this code that uses less much less memory than the other one. Uh, the memory on this, this, this case here was not a problem. But the surprise here is, is this time con consumption when you use jump instead of using low level API. So just to, to detail more what's happening here, when you are adding constraints on the backward step of the SDP, the, the the code was two times slower than the low-level API. And when you are evaluating the bounds, just changing the right-hand side of the models, uh, we are three times slower than the low-level API. So uh, I opened an issue in 2017 about this. We were talking a little bit more. And uh, my question with that was that there is a limit to what we can do with jump. Uh, for, 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 for example, uh, I know that other people developing SDP in Jump have to do also this, have to use low-level API. But uh, my hope was that in the new version, uh, it, this sh should be much better than that. So, uh, so I did a benchmark on that day, 
using some different ways to add constraints, uh, just to know if there is a better way to add those constraints, and comparing everything with CPLEX API. So it's just a, a model here, a simple model. It's very easy to solve. N is the dimension of the problem, and I have a lot of cuts here. I have, uh, I have many cuts. And I will benchmark all this implementation of adding constraints to the model. So uh, I had uh, 300,000 constraints to the model. My dimension was 100. Uh, the model, just to know, the model is solving five seconds. It's an easy model, just a toy problem. Uh, and I do two runs, because sometimes when, when you benchmark Julia, the first run you pre-compile, and the second one sometimes is much faster than the first one. But uh, I didn't see this on this, those case. So we have the vector one, the scalar one, the second scalar, and also the CPLEX API. You can see that, that, that there is a, a huge difference if you're using vector one. It's better to use scalar constraints, to add constraints using scalar weight. But also, I did some comparison uh, between the different version of Julia and jump versions. So the first one is 0 0.6, and uh, I'm going to 0 0.7, and later 1.0. And the, the last two comparisons is between the zero, jump 0 0.18 and jump 0 0.19. Okay. So you can see that there isn't much increase on, on the time when you are changing Julia. But there was an increase uh, on the time when you're using jump 0, 19. Again, don't don't be don't be don't don't be mad about these results. I just want to show and to, to know how to solve this this problem. Uh, uh, and what is happening here uh, with the new version of jump? I had the results. The, the important thing for me on this this part is that I I did this benchmark to show that 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 improving on jump that we had improving on zero nineteen and uh, I was sad about this, this results. Uh, I also checked the, the 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 memory consumption. There isn't much in, uh, decrease in memory cons consumption during the, those versions. But yesterday, during the okay, are you are you just saying uh, maybe you should try to use direct mode if you want to know? Yes, exactly. I was saying. That. So yesterday, and during the Benoit presentation, now is the, the good part. Uh, I thought that the right way to for me for this problem, if you have direct mode for this problem, and I was talking with Oscar yesterday, and he said, "Oh man, use the direct mode; it would be much better." So that's. Uh, Calm down. Constraints. Okay, so uh, I, I tried yesterday to use direct model. Uh, I just uh, refreshed the benchmark. This is a different machine, so I, I, I'm showing the new benchmark with the, another machine. And the direct model was very, very good. I have some real improvement on the memory consumption. We we have half of the memory consumption for from the other other way to use jump. This is a very good result because we are seeing just many different ways with, that you can use jump, that may, that may, many different layers that you can use it. Okay. okay, I will talk about that. Uh, uh, I know that this is a very huge improvement from the direct model, the, the, the model that doesn't use direct model. But it's, yeah, it's a little bit worse than the and the other version. But I think if you, if you, we can improve this this time here, if we can fix some of the, of the regression, this will be much closer from the low level API. I'm very hopeful with that. I think this will be much, much better version of Jump. And I, I, I thank you, uh, Jump Dev guys, Benoit. Uh, 
and the, the other ones that uh, the developed did, Joaquin, and Miles, and Oscar for that. And just to wrap up, uh, what's happened since we started to use and jump? We are much more happy. Uh, we uh, we changed the way that we are developed software the, on, on lumps. Now our our projects are on Julia, and now the courses are using Julia. And we are constructing. We are trying to give more back to community. We are trying to create more frameworks to give some feedback to the community. Uh, also, we are having some very successful products with a small team of person. You don't have to have a, a, a very good developer to to do this the, this product. And since then, we have more than 15 publications using Jump and Julia, and at least 14 in development. OK, thank you. If you have any doubts about the benchmarks, or if you want to know about the, the those, you can ask me anytime. You have you posted the codes? What? Have you posted the codes? Yes, yes, yes. It's, I, I did some changes yesterday, uh, but I will refresh the code. So it's the same issue? I will put in the issue. Excuse me, let me set up the. It, it looked like um, one of the changes <laughs> there was. Uh, Yes. Do we have some increase in Yes. I, I don't know what happened there, but was thirty percent of increase. Oscar said 